with a screen. So, Q&A number five. Anybody who got any questions? <coughs> oh, doing languages today, aren't we? Because it's Saturday. Uh, don't have to do languages. We can do anything you want. Oh, I'm not fussy. Let's see if we've got anybody who actually comes on and uh, asks a question. Uh, in the meantime, I've been updating Microsoft 2019, haven't I? Right. So... Visual Studio. Here we go. Uh, that one there. Okay, let's get it on screen now. Let's see what we can do with this. Hello, dinglings. Does that look like it's on screen? No, that looks more like it's on screen over here. Uh, yeah, okay. We'll do that. So that's my F sharp program. Alright, so it said file new project uh, language F sharp yay oh look what we got here console app a project for creating a command line application that can run on .NET Core and Windows Linux and Mac OS oh. really web uh, library I'll choose this top one it sounds good next and we'll call it console app uh, f sharp play solution no no. Can we have the D drive, please? Uh, you can go in your workspace. There we go. Create new solution, console, blah, 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 create. Ooh, it's doing something. <laughs> Is it just to give me something to do? Oh, he's done a hello world for me. You can't see what it's saying at the top, can you? I'll just bring the top down a little bit. There we go. There we go. It says debug any CPU console app F sharp. Now, I'd never ever... Um, Mm, this looks interesting. Never do anything at this point. I just run, usually run whatever it tells me we've got. So this is F sharp. Open system. Namespace system. We've got a flashing thingy here. Okay. Namespace system. Opens declaration. Can be removed. Alright, oh, okay. It doesn't need the open declaration. Alright. As if I care. Um, what can I do with this? Execute an interactive. Debug an interactive. Rename. Quick actions and refactoring. Oh, peak. Peak. Okay, we can't peek in there. That's a shame. I was hoping we were able to peek into whatever the system is. That would have been uh, nice. Even better, <coughs> the first thing it says here, learn more about F -sharp at F -sharp org, which is what I would have said. Well done, Microsoft, you got that bit right. On the right-hand side, it seems to have this kind of weird thing going on here in black. I don't know what this is about, but it looks interesting. Uh, over here, we've got dependencies. Nugget. 
F sharp core SDK Microsoft Net Core App 2 1. Okay. And this is my program. Alright. Nuggets. <coughs> Isn't Nugget um, a copy, well, Microsoft's copy of Linux's or Ubuntu's apt get? So, get packages. I'm sure that that's what it is. Anyway. Interesting. <laughs> Got a lot of noise in the background. Uh, I'm going to close the door. Uh, I don't normally because there's a cat in here, but I'm going to have to close the door. Come on, viewers. Let's open the chat up. Chatty chat time. Come on, chatty chats. Uh, it's Q and A time. There we go. <coughs> there are always more questions than answers. There you go. Fun fact. Uh, so we've got an entry point. Oh right, that is a full thing. New unit, entry point, attribute type, entry point attribute equals inherent, inherit attribute. New unit, entry point attribute, okay. Creates an instance of the attribute. Which is new unit. Okay, adding this attribute to a function indicates it is the entry point for an application. If this attribute is not specified for an exe, then the initialization implicit in the module bindings in the last file in the compilation sequence are used as the entry point, which means that this must be... <sighs> That's a hard way of putting it. Last file in the compilation sequence is used. Yeah, so this has to be the last file used. Okay. Well, it's the same as C++ then. That's exactly what happens in C++. It's got a main, because that's what they've decided to call it. You can call it anything you want. Uh, argv equals printfn. Hello world from f sharp. Zero return an integer exit code. Okay. Sounds straightforward to me. Hmm. Coffee. <coughs> yes, I took the opportunity to get some more coffee. Uh, we are on number five now, aren't we? Yeah, we've increased the number. Okay. Alrighty. Programming in F sharp. How do you do it? Don't know. Do I really care? Nope. Console app. Build? It builds? Right, it builds. And it built that. Hello world from F sharp. That just says print fn. Hmm. But there's an equal sign there. Oh. That's an interesting way of doing it. Hmm. So I, if I'm going to test code, I do that. I guess. Where did I put that code? I uh, put it in workspace under what we call this. This is console app. So it's test F sharp. I should have a text file. I do. Open it with notepad. Right, 
This is what I've got. I've got red squiggly straight away. First thing I should do, I think, is um, edit that advanced, I think it is. Oh no, outlining. Mm, no, advanced. Toggle line comment. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Open system windows dot forms. Hmm. So already I've got a problem with the library. <coughs> so that's what that does mean. That open. Open means open a library. So we don't have access to that. This is a Windows Forms thingy. Right, okay. That's fine. Alright. There we go. So, Windows Forms won't work in here. Which is fine. That's perfectly fine. It was just a, a test. So it looks like, really, what you do in this language is you let Hmm. <laughs> Let add add two numbers equal num one plus num two. And we have to let num1 equal uh, 10, for instance, and let is prototyping num2 equal uh, 12. Okay, there you go. I've just programmed in F sharp. And print fn oh it comes up does it print f print fn and print f format don't know so I'll go with that one and I will say <coughs> the given numbers equal something. Let's see if we've got anything in our uh, new label text. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let from equals new form. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. Yeah, right. Fair enough. So this open system is what's letting me use printf. But it's a function. I can tell it's a function because it's got one of these little boxes next to it. These are these purple boxes. Uh, I can close that. I'm not really interested. I've never written F sharp before. Uh, so the given number equals something. Uh, I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to put in here, comma, I'm guessing now, guessing add two numbers. Okay, it doesn't like my syntax, that's okay. How does printfn work, is the question. So, this is my first stopping point, add two numbers. And it's not trying to help me out anymore. So that that's generally what I would 
would think of. Has type U int int a plus ignore considering the ignore discard this value explicitly g expression t ignore ah right expression right okay or let to bind the result to a name e.g. let result equal expression <laughs> got you well I've already done the let result equals expression so I've already done that but well, they've got this interesting piping system hmm Hmm. But you can see what I'm trying to do now. Y you can see that I'm trying to print f the given numbers equal add two numbers. Pretty simple, standard, initial kind of thing that I would like as a program to be able to do. <coughs> so print f n. I haven't. Got so this is where we start. So I've actually started now, and this is where you start learning your language. So. If somebody was asking me, how do you learn language? I get to this stage, and then I read the top, and it says learn more about it at http.org copy. This is the way I was hoping it was going to go. And if I put, actually no, just get rid of that. Paste. That'll do. Here we go, learn. We're back here again. About learning F sharp. Here we go. Mm -hmm. uh, what's on the HTML? Comments, strings. Okay, let's have a look through here. <coughs> <coughs> Any questions, anybody? Slashing strings, indent strings, contents by stripping leading spaces. Okay. Alrighty. Yeah, okay. Functions. Ah, number is percent D. And then space. Okay. Funnily enough, that's exactly what it would be in C. And just delete that. Okay. So if I run that now, I should get the result 12. Sorry, 22. God, I can't count, can I? The given numbers equal 22. And this is how I learn a language. I first of all see if I can understand it. And I think I can. Uh, this is your hash includes from C++ and your includes from C. In C sharp I think it uses open or include or god knows what, something else. Um, okay, let's save everything here. But yeah, that works. So there you go, I can now write a program in F sharp. How glorious is that? By the way, F sharp works upwards. Backwards. So you can only print F what you've already done. 
So with your functions, you can only use functions that have been previously defined. So that's why that said this down here. Bindings in the last file in the compilation sequence are used as the entry point because it has to go the last to first. So the first thing it compiles is how to do what it says in the last file. <laughs> C++ and C work in exactly the same way, so there's no surprises here. And the functionality is also stacked in the same way, so there's no surprises there. And it's the same in JavaScript. It's all the same. Um, so this language is just the same as all the other languages, except it doesn't have a comma, it doesn't have a semicolon, and just lets you prototype and that's by the way this is this would be the same program probably in Python if I was running Python here that program uh, would probably look the same I don't know about these lines and this line but the ones in between would look very familiar and that's how I test a program just to make sure it works in the same way uh, sorry programming language and it does so I can, yeah, I could write the whole of what I've written already in F sharp if you want me to. But I'd only be able to do it for the .NET framework uh, because I don't want to use Mono on my other systems. And that's why I'm writing in C++ so I don't have to do that. If there is a way of doing F sharp um, without Mono, then fine. I'll, you know, correct me. I can be wrong, but so far that's what I've understood about it. My understandings are only at very, very basic research level at this point. I've only skimmed the surface. As you can see, I've just written a program in F Sharp, and it's not a big one. It doesn't do something complicated, but it does something, and it works. And that's it. I've just learned F Sharp next. Um... What would I use F sharp for? Dot net. Windows. Dot net networking in Windows. What would I use C sharp for? A server. I would um, build a server in C sharp and any programming that needs to be done like this, I would do in F sharp. Or I would do uh, F sharp as uh, maybe a scripting language um, mixed with Python, maybe because it's very similar. Looks roughly the same. Um, I think you're going to find similarities between the two languages. Um, you're going to find similarities between F sharp and C sharp, obviously. And I think the main differences are just going to be there's no semicolon at the end. I think F sharp is probably Microsoft's Python. If I dig further into it, I wonder if that's the truth. Uh, so, is F sharp Microsoft's Python? language it also has been influenced by C sharp Python <laughs> Haskell scalar and Erlang so yeah it's Microsoft's Python language I think. I don't care what Reddit wants to do. It's nothing to do with me. And uh, like F sharp. Where's he mentioned Python in here? More than a toy project for MS. Mm. Mm. 
Is Microsoft serious about it? Oh, I can answer that one. Yes, they are very serious about it. They make it very hard for it to go into your uh, IDE, but once you get it into your IDE, it works. God knows how I managed it, but I managed it in the end. Uh, hmm. Any questions? In no? Okay. F sharp reminds me of Dart. Okay, Scala on JVM is a much better experience than F sharp on .NET. Wish Microsoft would change that, but no, F sharp came from Scala. <laughs> Don't do your research before you put that in. Uh, Anthony, did, yeah, right, okay. You see, the, the mentioning in it work alongside Java, C sharp, and Python. Well. All, it's a, it's in the same family. They're all very, very similar. Java and C-sharp are the same thing. So I'm gathering now that Python and F-sharp are virtually the same thing. Yeah, do the Microsoft Iron implementations of dynamic languages, Iron Python, yeah. One can put F-sharp functional programming language in Microsoft, which we feel is a differentiator when compared to using Python. Machine learning functionality, interesting. So they're actually doing that comparison already. Um, I mean, what, I can't do that comparison, I have to use Google, because I've only written one, two, well, I've written one, two, three, four lines of F-sharp, um, so that, oh, that's nice, it highlights nicely. Oh, uh, they've put some thought into this, haven't they? Obviously. I mean, printf n should be in a different colour. But maybe that's just my colour scheme. Um, but yeah, I mean, they've obviously put some thought into it. It looks Pythonese to me. Not Monty Pythonese. Pythonese, as in the language. Um, or Pythonic, I think the actual word should be. So for prototyping, um, working quickly outside of uh, a complicated server and then running complicated algorithms which can be prototyped and then running that into a C-sharp server. Oh my god, what a powerful language F-sharp just became. And that's why... I think the machine learning people are looking at it because when you go into these subjects of deep learning you are looking at very complex algorithms which can be set up in um, on a server in say C sharp very easily because C sharp is just a very very easy and straightforward Java type uh, language and the functionality here means that you can build up external uh, an external dependency for the server which you can have full control over I mean he said it built but did it have to build? it's just using .NET .exe has executed so if I change that number to uh, let me just get rid of that close the window if I change that, this is this is the kind of testing that I do. If I put that to twelve, so we get twenty-four now, and I click on there, yeah, it built. So it is a build buildable language. And there's the output. That's the debug output. It makes a DLL. How interesting. Which is a dynamic link. Uh, 
dynamic library link which can then be accessed from outside of a C sharp. Oh, that is beautiful. So I could actually use this for mine, my project. If it was Windows using DLLs. That would be a fantastic idea. I like it. Uh, as a language, I like it. <laughs> okay, there you go. It has a lot of potential for writing programs on Windows. So there you go, I've tested it out now. I know what F-sharp is. I have a rough idea of what it is, should I say. And I've had an experience with it, which is good. Yeah, so it builds into a DLL. <laughs> Who would have thought? Does it have a better description? Build order? No. Package manager. I don't know what he's got a package manager for. Oh, because he's got to run it in s from somewhere, hasn't it? Intellicode. There's a log. So it's made a log in VSIX. V6 is the system that updates um, Visual Studio, which I find interesting. So it's using that same system. I so wonder if Visual Studio is actually written in C sharp and F sharp. With C sharp being the main system and the DLLs being F sharp. It seems to me to be a very good way of writing things. Hmm. There you go. So if you're ever writing a program for Windows and you are allowed and have a uh, license to use Visual Studio 2019, hats off to them. I think they've got a good one there. C sharp and F sharp, way to go mateys, way to go. I like it. I'll save all of that. I'll probably never look at it again, but in case I do. Or somebody asks me about it later on, like, well, what do you know about F sharp? I'll be able to tell them. I know this much about it. I've got a program running it still. Okay, everything closed down there. Yay! Thank you. Um. Okay, do an advert here for Twitch. Um, I have a Twitch stream, as you can see here, uh, online, online, online channel. I have a channel. Here's my live Twitch channel. Here it is. Um, there you go. It's ooh, that was a nice one. It look at that. It's not a nice one going into the background now. Well, that's beautiful. Let's get off that quick. Uh, there's a few things down here. I'm usually live. Uh, this between nine and six. Well, it's nine and five. So between nine and five, a regular day. Uh, it's this is my job. Um, so this is what I do. So between nine and five, you'll catch me on here. And if you don't catch me on here, between nine and five, you can then I upload. By the way, straight after. I upload to Amber Skies here, so you can search, search Amber Skies C++, it's the easiest way to find me, I'm here. Um, if you go to the playlists, and this is what I didn't mention yesterday, when, no it was Thursday when somebody asked me, don't look at all playlists, change it to created playlists, and then you can see them all. So there's an absolute mass of programming and uh, there's even a stage one to stage four how to do a full program and then I go on to testing it then I go on to use it I think it's a dynamic link library I make here and then I go on to test it and then I go on to program a game using it um, 
static library development yeah amber skies as a project that i think we can pull that down these two ignore i think these can be deleted now Okay, view full playlist, edit, playlist, delete playlist. Yeah, there's there's nothing in it, and I'm not updating it, so that can go, and it puts me back to all play. Oh, you stupid machine! <coughs> Sorry. I think this is the same. Yeah, it hasn't been updated. So it's out of date. It's out of date. It's useless. Delete playlist. Delete it. So all the rest are okay. The standard. And it comes, keeps coming back to this one. Stop it! YouTube! Stop telling me where I want to go. Accept my choice and be happy with it. Um. So that's testing, and then I went on to the game, yeah. There's some games I'm playing. I haven't added to these for ages, actually. I should do, really. Learning C++ with QT. Oh, beautiful, yes. Let's have a look at QT. Sorry, I'm always advertising for them, and they treated me so badly. No, so I'm not advertising for them anymore. This is true, they did treat me very badly. Okay, created playlists, um, C++ game programming, there's quite a bit in there, that's my chilling out, that's my Fridays. Ramblings and rants I usually do on a Saturday, <coughs> Sundays is my naval action, uh, game club, is that what we're doing now, is that current, yeah that's current isn't it, that's what we're doing now. Yeah. It is. Excellent, yeah. So that's the current game club I'm doing on Twitch. So that's Monday to Thursday. What else have we got on here? Yeah, that's roughly about it. On Saturdays I do ranting. I'm doing these Q&As if anybody wants to join in. No? Okay, that's good news to me. Um, Why is there only one of these? Is there not Season 2 XCOM? Yes, there is. This is a live one. So this might pop up next week. I might try that on Friday. Do another one of these. Doesn't tell me when the last one was done, does it? No, no, it still hasn't given me a date of when the last one was done. Hmm. There you go. June the 6th. Oh, it's not too far ago. Uh, too long ago. But really, I should do more of these. See if anybody's interested, because it's really a good game. And I do the Long War version, uh, which is even better than the original. Uh, it's a mod, and it uh, does make it into a Long War. So that's what it does. Makes it more like the original, original. Original, 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 original XCOM. And it works well. So, there we go. Uh -huh. Yep. I am on VPN. Protect your network. VPN. Use it. It's free, by the way, on Opera. Mm. Okay, question time over. I proved that I can program in F-sharp. Um, I've shown you how... I go about learning uh, a programming language. I would probably now sit down. If I was to carry on using F Sharp, which I'm not because I haven't got a use for it, uh, I would then sit down and watch videos. Um, one evening, get up the next day, decide on a project or a, a mini project, and complete it in the language uh, from start to finish as a small project. Something like um, a file reader or a file saver, like a, a small feature of something bigger. 
I would then do that or passing a file from one program to another a file name so that the other file could then load up the file and display it so the first program would take in a file and save it pass the name to a second file which could then pick up that file name and load that file name and display it on the screen and that's that, that, that's the kind of thing I'd do I'd start with loading a file that would be my first project then I'd look at saving the file would be my second project then I'd look at how to pass information from one program to another that would be my next project and then after that well you're starting networking aren't you ah well done next week what have we got next week what's coming up um monday i've got an appointment I've got to go somewhere, but that's not till later on in the day, so I might be able to get my stream done before my appointment. Um, but I think I'm really looking to finish um, the server part on Monday. Tuesday... I want to try maybe just clip maybe n another clean up on the server. I don't know. I might probably not spend too much more time on it after that. Um, we'll be onto the GUI, not the GUI. We've done the GUI. Uh, it'll be onto the display 3D, which is still in 2D. So hopefully we'll end up next week on that, and we will should have polished up our network SDK by that time. So hopefully by the end of next week we'll have a functional uh, game again because I broke it obviously when I started doing uh, phase two last Monday. So hopefully by the next, end of next week we might have the end of phase two which would be awesome because that means it's the uh, place where I want it. So we can do 3D that'd be nice or a feature or something like that that'd be ace right in the meantime take care uh any questions last five minutes any questions you want to ask me about last week's uh or anything that i've said today anything at all i'll put it up in chat any questions about anything actually i'm not really bothered if you want to know who's going to win wimbledon no idea <laughs> Because uh, I'm wrapping up, it's now eight minutes into the women's final, and I'm going downstairs to watch it. <laughs> so, uh, no questions. In the meantime, I'd like you all to take care. I th this last week you proved me to be a great crowd, who, the people who do chat to me uh, during the streams. And I've enjoyed every minute of it. So I'd like to give all of those people a shout out. All of you watchers, a shout out. And as we go into tomorrow, it's naval action. That's right. And Monday, more programming. So take care. And of course, have fun. <laughs>